Jared, a young filmmaker battles through life because of his OCD. He turns to online dating to find the love of his life, but little does he know that he's already met her. In the opening scene, we get to see the protagonist and his obsessive morning routine. After washing his hands twice over an exceptionally clean sink, he gets a Q-tip and cleans his ears. After cleaning, he wraps the Q-tip in exactly one square of toilet paper, before adjusting the roll to its original position. Checking himself in the mirror, he makes sure he looks alright before going to work. At church, he and his partner are working on taking pictures of a couple that will soon marry. His partner Marcus tries to take some good pictures but it looks like the groom isn't having it. He asks for Jared to adjust the light and they end up taking the perfect shots, even the bride claims to love them after seeing them. Seeing her satisfaction, Marcus suggests they take some pictures in the snow, and the bride starts going on about how the wedding was supposed to be in June. Jared and Marcus stand with the groom as the bride goes on about how she made the groom lose 15 pounds to look good in the pictures. After finishing the shoot, Marcus and Jared put their equipment into the van as Marcus comments on the bride. He assures Jared that they're worse things than to be single and even refers to her as Krula. Trying to understand the groom, Jared assumes that the bride must do something special for him to be with her. But Marcus lets him know that every woman does something special for her man. He has his wife Megan but she is not the only Megan in the world, although he would never go searching for a new one when he already has the perfect one. Marcus gives him some advice for his dating profile and Jared reveals that he's finally ready to make one. On his profile, he plans to write about him being an aspiring filmmaker and a storyteller who wants to make people think. Shaking his head, Marcus lets Jared know that women don't want a guy that makes them think. After going back and forth, they finally settle on Jared putting that he's working in a studio. They go to the studio to take some pictures of his profile when Jared reveals that he wants someone intelligent, funny, and has a good imagination. Marcus takes his photos after advising him not to be himself but rather to put his foot forward. Intrigued, Jared asks what that means but Marcus plays it off. Assuring him that he's already prepared, Jared pulls out a list of questions he has made for reference. By using the list he would sound scripted, so Marcus lets him know that women like guys who are spontaneous and on their feet. After finishing the shoot, Jared and Marcus go to Megan's work to pick her up. Megan has some things to finish, so they agree to wait for her in the library. On their way there, a girl bumps into Jared making him fall. The girl is Megan's colleague Katie, and she rapidly apologizes to Jared and even tries to help him get up. Getting up, Jared claims to be alright and doesn't blame Katie for it. Thinking he's sweet, Katie caresses his cheek, making him nervous. Megan introduces them to each other and Katie seems to be excited. But Jared excuses himself as he runs to the bathroom. Rushing into the bathroom, he goes for the soap immediately and washes his face intensely. Finally, they leave Megan's work, and we can see them set down at Hayes Barton, a place they often go to. Megan asks him what he thinks of Katie, revealing that she had given her permission to give out her number. Jared admits that she's cute, but he thinks that she'll be too much for him. Megan tries to change his mind but he assures her that he's fine since he has a dating plan it gives him more control over the process since he's not dated a lot. Marcus goes to the bathroom, so Megan takes the chance to let Jared know about exposure therapy. You force yourself to do the actions that make you feel anxious and with time you get more comfortable. Jared reveals that he knows about it but doesn't plan to do it because he already has something planned that will work out. Back at his rather interesting apartment, Jared is working on his King Kong project when a notification on his computer catches his mind. Turning his head to the monitor, he sees that he has one glance at his profile and it is from 26-year-old Denise. The next day at work, Jared shows Marcus her profile and reveals that he's texting her. Marcus asks him whether he plans to take her out but Jared reveals that he's taking things slow. The reason why he's taking things slow is that he doesn't know how it all goes. He even asks Marcus how long he should chat with her until he asks her out, so Marcus lets him know that he should chat with her until he feels comfortable enough to meet her in person. Sadly, Jared admits that he's never comfortable, so to make matters better, Marcus suggests he takes her to lunch at Cafe Luna. Worried, Jared asks whether the bathrooms are clean there because he doesn't feel comfortable going to places that he's not familiar with. They establish that the bathrooms are clean, however, Jared worries about pagers. If they give him a pager it'll be an extra trip to the bathroom, and he's trying to keep the trips to a minimum. He finally gathers the courage to meet Denny's in person, Getting up early he does his routine before choosing what to wear. We get to see how serious his OCD is as he has a hard time choosing which t-shirt is cleaner between the same folded shirts that sit in his drawer. Finally, he arrives at the restaurant, and shortly after comes Denny's. Unfortunately, there are no available tables so the waiterless hands Jared a pager. As they stand on the side, waiting for their pager to buzz, Denny's starts a small conversation about the weather. Continuing the conversation, Jared asks what she does in a bank, and she reveals that she's a loan officer. He jokes about being short on cash, so she offers to finance his next big production. Embarrassed, he admits that he's not working on movies but rather in a videography studio until he goes back to film school. They go back and forth trying to figure out what he does and it gets a bit awkward. 
While the topic's about films, Denise asks what his favorite movie is. Being a movie lover, he has a hard time choosing his favorite movie, so she asks about his favorite comedy. Edward is his favorite comedy but Denny's doesn't know about it, so they move on to drama. She ends up not knowing that either, but luckily for them the pager buzzes. The menus are handed to them and soon after they order the ravioli. It already bothers Jared that he has to touch the menu, but when the waitress asks for him to hand it to her after ordering, he can't resist the urge to wash his hands. He excuses himself as he claims to have something sticky on his fingers. Returning to the table, he asks her about her start in banking as he opens his silverware. He doesn't pay much attention to her explaining that baking runs in their family as he spots the rotten knife. Noticing that he's not interested in what she's saying, she asks about his start in the film business. The waitress comes back and Jared asks her for a new set of utensils before running to the bathroom once again. Denny's doesn't seem to like his trips and that can be seen on her face as he comes back from the bathroom. The following day, Jared talks with Marcus in the office. He reveals that he only took three trips to the bathroom and Marcus assumes that she might have thought that he had stomach problems. However, Jared claims that everything has gone smoothly, but he doesn't know whether they'll go out again as she had told him that she was busy before he even got the chance to ask her about it. Unfortunately for him, Marcus lets him know that his trips had made her schedule far busier than it already had been. However, in a short amount of time, Jared gets another glance from 25-year-old Taylor who works for an energy company. Finding out that she works as a lobbyist, Marcus lets Jared know that she's used to fine dining, so he should take her to a fancy restaurant. Shea Shannon is the place he recommends and assures Jared that the bathrooms are spotless. When the time of the date comes, we see Jared doing his usual routine before heading to the restaurant. Entering the restaurant, he sees Taylor sitting at the bar. He approaches her and she immediately lets him know that he looks different from his picture. Wanting to be nice, he lets her know that she looks exactly like her photo, but she rudely asks him not to say that as she hates her picture. They sit down and look at their menus when Jared decides to talk about how people don't like their appearances. Taylor only nods her head and doesn't seem to remember what Jared does as he reminds her. Intrigued, she asks whether he's done something she's seen, but he lets her know that most of their business is weddings. Not impressed, she asks whether he plans to do that for the rest of his life and he lets her know that he's only doing it as practice. She makes a snarky comment about him not making enough money when a handsome waiter comes by. Seeing how attractive he is, Taylor starts flirting with him immediately, as she asks him to recommend something to eat. They order their food and drinks, and same as the previous date, the waiter asks Jared to hand him the menu, which leads Jared to a breaking point once again. After washing his hands, he comes back and asks Taylor about her job. However, she suggests changing the subject as she claims that her job is boring. He asks about her hobbies but she doesn't answer, so he starts talking about classical movies. Mentioning different genres and eras, he hopes that she knows at least one of them, but the same as the previous girl, she doesn't know anything about them. As they're talking a fly keeps circling Jared, so he finally smashes it between his hands. Unfortunately, he has to go to the bathroom once again to wash his hands. Returning to the table, he sees Taylor flirting with the waiter, and a look of disappointment and sadness can be seen on Jared's face. As always, he tells Marcus all about it and Marcus lets him know that Katie has asked for him once again. He can't believe that Katie's interested in him but is skeptical about going on a date with her because he won't know anything about her beforehand. Online dating makes dating easier for him because he already knows something about the person he's going out with. Megan comes by and lets Jared know that Katie is sweet, smart, and kind of goofy which is perfect for him. After short thinking, Jared finally agrees to meet her as he lets them know that he will be asking her out. As he's getting ready for the date, he gets a call from Marcus. In the phone call, Marcus tells him specifically to try his hardest not to embarrass them, but soon realizes that he's putting a lot of pressure on him, so he asks him to relax and have fun like a normal person. Katie and Jared finally meet in front of Hayes Barton. They get inside and the waiter immediately recognizes Jared, so he lets them know that they'll call out once there's an available table. As they stand on the side, Katie asks Jared about film school. Jared plans to go back once he gets the finances as he doesn't like to start something and not finish it. Dropping her scarf on the ground, Katie apologizes for it and promises that she's not a klutz. Having managed to run special collections, she has proven not to be so clumsy. She assumes that Jared wants to become a director and he lets her know that she's right. Fascinated with his dream job, she assumes that it must be so great to tell your story to the whole world. Surprised, Jared asks whether she's into movies, and not only is she into them, she claims to stay through the credits as she loves appreciating people who have made the film. They're finally called out and they go by their table. Knowing that he visits the place often, she asks him for suggestions off the menu. The waitress comes by and they order the same drink, which is unsweetened iced tea. As she's preparing their drinks, they talk about what they're going to eat. Jared orders the salmon and Katie the Greek salad, but same as his previous dates, the waitress asks him to hand her the menu, so he goes to the bathroom to wash his hands. Returning to his table, he runs into a crowd of people but once he goes to sit down, someone calls out his name. Turning around, he sees his friend Brandon putting his hand out for him to shake. Despite him having a dirty hand, Jared shakes his hand. 
Brandon is his college friend who still hasn't finished like Jared. Looking at Katie, he asks who she is and Jared lets him know that she's his friend. He finally leaves, so Jared sits down. However, he starts stressing out about his hand being dirty from Brandon and can't stop clutching it. He tries to focus on what Katie's saying but finds it hard to fight the urges. Katie continues the conversation about movies and reveals that her favorite movies are the old ones. She asks him about his favorite director, and Jared reveals that it's Stanley Kubrick. When she mentions one of his movies, Jared is shocked that she would even know about the director's existence. Katie promises to put it on her list to watch, as she asks what's so special about Kubrick. His films being so meticulous is what does it for Jared. Everything is perfectly composed like a painting, but there's still life underneath. The waitress comes by to drop off some breadsticks, so it snaps Jared back to reality. Not being able to resist the urge anymore, he excuses himself and heads to wash his hands in the bathroom. As he's washing his hands, he looks up in the mirror and we can see that he's deceited in himself. Once he goes back to the table, Katie excuses herself to use the bathroom. Looking up at the many posters on the wall, one catches his eye as it says that a couple's love was doomed from the moment they met. Katie comes back and they continue the conversation about Kubrick before their food arrives. Walking out of the restaurant, a smile can be noticed on both faces. Jared lets her know that he had fun on the date and asks her whether she'll be interested in going out with him again. And not only does she agree, but she also suggests they go see a movie so she can hear his critical response. Remembering almost immediately, Jared invites her to the History Museum where a movie by Alfred Hitchcock will be playing. To his surprise, Katie had already known about him. The following day at work, Jared lets Marcus know how good the date had been. Despite going to the bathroom twice, he managed to get a second date with her and he couldn't be happier. Their date night finally comes and we can see Jared entering the museum. He stands in front of a pirate, looking for Katie when he hears pirate noises coming from behind it. Katie comes out laughing and Jared lets her know that her pirate impressions are very good. As they stand in line Katie admits to being excited to see Vertigo the way that it's supposed to be seen, on the big screen. While she loves watching movies and series on TV, Kate admits that it's not the same as you can't feel the magic on TV. Fortunately for her, they show old movies every month at the museum. It's their turn to buy a ticket, but when the cashier hands him the two adult cards, he hands them to Katie before going to wash his hands in the bathroom. Coming out, he is surprised to see her standing there so understanding and not minding the fact that he has gone to the bathroom. Looking at her in awe, he asks if she's ready and they go inside. Both of them love the museum and often visit it but none of them has watched a movie there. Unfortunately, Katie lets Jared know that the legislature is going to cut their budget, despite there being a huge turnout. Katie gets so passionate as she talks about the importance of preserving things such as museums and movies, that she apologizes to Jared for going off. However, he lets her know that it's totally fine since he often finds himself in a situation like that. Not only has that date gone great, but with time, Jared marks himself as off the market on the dating site as their relationship progresses. They can be seen everywhere together, enjoying each other's company. Jared even lets Katie hold his hand, and even though he continues to compulsively wash his hands, he does it with a smile. One day, as they are shooting a wedding, Jared reveals that he's ready to take the next big step. He reveals that he's planning on inviting Katie, which Marcus protests, because he never lets him inside. Jared justifies himself as the reason he doesn't let Marcus in is that he touches everything. The day finally comes, Katie knocks on his door and he lets her in. On his way to show her the apartment, he grabs a lemon tissue to have it in care. They move farther into the room and Jared reveals that the room is a living room, a theater, an editing room, and a film set. Seeing the little project Jared has been working on, she asks what it is. He reveals that it's a little homage to King Kong as he offers to show her the work he has. Excited to see it, she sits down and he reminds her that it's unfinished work before showing it to her. King Kong is presented by a starfish as we see it climb the building. Katie is amazed by the project and expresses how grateful she is that he's showing it to her by putting her hand on his. Feeling unnerved, he lets her know that he has something to tell her. Being completely honest with her, he tells her the whole truth about his OCD. Relieved that it isn't a stomach virus, Katie assures him that it doesn't concern her. Claiming that everyone has OCD, she assumes that it's not that bad, so he reveals the napkin that he's been holding in his hand since she arrived at his apartment. He admits that he had it in case she touched him but he doesn't tell her that because he doesn't like her, but because he does. She apologizes for making it out to be a normal thing and he reveals that it was the reason he didn't finish film school. Despite it being a concerning problem, Katie assures him that it doesn't bother her. Listening to her accept him the way he is makes his heart beat faster, as he goes in for a passionate kiss. Their date goes smoothly as we see Jared walking Katie to her car. Wanting to return the invitation, Katie invites him to come to her apartment on Friday as she has something to show him as well. As always, we can see Jared with Marcus and Megan at Hayes Barton as he shares how he and Katie are doing. Megan is so excited to see them doing so well, but Jared can't help but express his concern to Marcus once they're left alone. 
The fact that Megan wanted to share something with him raised some suspicion, so he worries that it may be something worse than his OCD. Marcus doesn't say anything other than the fact that she has said it in a very classy way. Friday comes and we can see Katie waiting on the porch as Jared parks onto the side of the street. Getting to her apartment, she opens the door only for Jared to see the thing he's most afraid of, a hoarder mess. Piles and piles of unnecessary stuff, coated with a thick layer of dust lay everywhere around the room. Staring in disbelief, he doesn't move or say anything. Finally, Katie lets him know that he can come in, and as horrified as he is he gets in. Katie reveals that he is the first person that's ever been invited to her apartment beside her family, and they're already used to it. Katie admits that it's a lot to take in, but his being honest with her inspired her to come clean as well. Knowing that he's a clean freak, she lets him know that she has cleaned the couch for him to sit on. However, he declines her offer, claiming that he's fine with standing. Katie admits to being attached to the things she likes, she finds comfort in knowing that she has the things if she needs them and that they're not going to waste. She can enjoy them anytime she wants, but the problem is that she likes way too many things. Despite being horrified, Jared tries to be nice about it as he justifies her actions by saying that it's not her fault that she's interested in many things. However, once he gets home, he anxiously scrubs his whole body in the shower. He makes sure to let Marcus know how disappointed he is as well, comparing her apartment's situation to the ending of Citizen Kane. What bothers Jared the most is that he likes Katie, but he has no choice but to forget about her as he puts himself back on the market. He tries dating some more as we see him on a date with a pretty girl, but the problem is that nothing seems to satisfy her, despite her exes giving her the world. After the date, Jared goes to the cinema with Marcus where he reveals that the girl had been volleyball. As they walk to the hall, they see the guy from the wedding photos they shot in the opening scene leaning against a wall. They notice that he looks better and healthier. A girl walks out of the bathroom and it is not the bride they originally shot with the guy, so Marcus assumes that the girl is genuine with him and doesn't expect him to be perfect. Marcus's words stick to Jared and make him think about his situation with Katie. He can't stop reminiscing about the times they've spent together, to her kind smile. He decides to call her but it goes straight to voicemail, so he gets out a paper to write her a letter but an image of her room pops up in his head. However, he doesn't let it get to him as we see him walking to the library. Getting in, he goes straight for her counter. She pretends that she doesn't know him as she treats him like a customer. Jared apologizes for freaking out and not calling. But she claims that there's no reason for him not to freak out as everyone would. However, he doesn't want to be just anybody with her. The reason she showed him the apartment was that she had thought that he was different. But she knew that it would be risky, so she let him know that there was no reason for him to feel bad. I should feel bad. Jared argues as he believes that they have a good chance but doesn't want his OCD to ruin it. Despite him trying to prove his point, Katie claims that he'll eventually get tired of her stuff because she already gets herself. She asks him why he didn't show up at her apartment if he wanted to fix things, so he calls himself a nutcase. Even worse, a moron, a jerk, a dipstick, a doofus, a lame brain, a numbskull, a dim bulb, and many more insults that you're probably not even going to think about. It brings a smile to Katie's face, however, she knows that nothing has changed just by his apology. He is still the same Jared he is. Wanting her to know how serious he is, he picks up his finger, glides it across the counter, and puts it in his mouth. Staring her deep into her eyes, he reveals that he's not going to wash his mouth as he believes that they're going to work out in the end. And he is right, we see them together a year later. As Jared gets ready for work, not only do we see that his excessive need to wash his hands has slowed down, but we see that Jared and Katie are living together. Despite them having two entrances to the house where each one of them resides on their side, they are a great example of love knowing no boundaries. 